Well, I guess we officially have three people, so I guess we can open the meeting. Well, we'll begin first by saying this meeting is being recorded. And then I'll read this, uh, <laughs> even the Mr. Hayden part. We are the pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the opening meeting law, general law section 30A, section 18. And the uh, governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the North Ready Community Planning Commission is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings as provided for in the order. A reminder that persons who would like to listen to this meeting while in progress may do so by calling 1-301-715-8592 and the meeting code is 985-430-0926. So that should uh, take care of that. So, um, do, we, we gotta, do you wanna continue to wait for Debbie or? I think we can take care of, um, we, I think we can take care of some of the small things. Small things, do we have any ZBAs? We don't. I didn't see any. Um, oh, oh, Debbie's waiting to be let in. Excuse me a minute. Okay. Oh. All right, she's connecting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, connecting to audio. There she is. <laughs> Better. Yay, Hi, Debbie. Debbie. Right. <laughs> your, your sound's not on, Deb. Unmute yourself. Can you hear me now? No, there we go. That sounds like a commercial. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get your VR headset, Debbie. <laughs> Don't blow your mind. I'm so sorry. Okay. We're gonna. If you're all set, Deb, we're gonna move along. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Um, so we might as well uh, start with. Um, the uh, minor modification request for 300 River Park, I guess, uh, Bill Buckley, you are here to make a presentation on that? Yes, I am, Mr. Chairman. Okay, um, Okay. please do then. So, Mr. Chairman, my name is Bill Buckley, and I work for Bay Colony Group, and we have been retained by Amazon Robotics to um, file this minor modifications to the site plan for their um, Amazon Robotics factory located at 300 River Park Drive. So this is a, the existing building is about 176,000 square foot manufacturing facility. It was built in 1990 and it currently houses the Amazon Robotics facility. Um, so they have retained an architectural firm, IA Interior Architects, they're an international firm, to design an extended a vestibule to their north entry of their manufacturing facility. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to um, I'm going to throw up a rendering so I can kind of talk to it. And let's see if it's here. And there it is. So this is the um, can everybody see that? Yep. Okay. Yep. So this is Just the um, this is the the north, they call it the north entrance. So as you're looking at the building, um, to the left would be River Park Drive. This is the right side of the building, which is uh, the north entrance. So this is currently an entrance down here. And the way, what it is, is this used to be initially, if you look at the initial drawings from 1990, there was a drive-in area and they've since converted that to a, it's a vestibule and you get into the building. So with the problem with COVID now is, of course, um, people, people getting close together. So it was not a big deal before where everybody would walk in the building and stand in the vestibule and get, it, it, as you can imagine, there's a decent amount of security. So they'd get swiped in and go in. Well, now that can't happen. Um, so, you know, they don't want people standing out here on the walkway 
right now there's a, a walkway that stretches along the building from all the way from the front of the building all the way to the rear of the building and you go in this way so what they want to do is they want to build a vestibule it's 80 feet long by about eight feet wide it's um the building itself is um currently is about 32 feet high this vestibule is only 10 feet high so it's really not an expansion, not an expansion of the building it's it's the purpose of it is, is to create a covered area so that people aren't standing out in the cold and rain going in. Um, and so what I've done is this rendering here, you can see the existing building in the yellow, this light brown is the expansion. Um, of course, there's probably about a two or three foot drop from one side to the other. So what we have to do is we have to rework the grades in this area here. Naturally, this is currently the um, handicap accessible entrance because you can park right there and walk directly in. That, of course, is going away. So um, what we've done is we've moved these parking spaces, these handicap accessible spaces, over here to the right side of the building as you're looking at the plan. It's actually the rear of the building. So those two spaces will be moved over to that area and the existing walkway which is there now we're going to rework those grades and put a um a railing in there in order to make this the the uh, architecture the handicap accessible route is the correct term for the facility so instead of coming in over here you'll come in there um, this will be in the same general area it's still a walkway but the steepness of it means that it's not the accessible route. This will be the accessible route. Over here on the left side, again, there'll be a, um, an entrance, you know, a concrete entrance there. But because, again, because of the grades, we had to put some steps on there to, in order to match the existing walkway. So this is, you know, this is the look. This is what the activity is. Um, there's no expansion of the parking lot. The, um, we're not, the only thing we're doing out here in the paving area is restriping the, um, let me show you, let me share another bit, a plan so that I can give you an idea of what this vestibule is going to look like. And this is the architectural drawing. Everybody see that? Not yet. Okay. Still not yet. Let me try this. There we go. Okay, good. So this would be as if we were standing in the parking lot looking at the, the building. This is the warehouse itself. This would be the end over here on the left. Mm -hmm. And then it stretches to the right. You can see, as I was talking earlier, this is about 32 feet high. And you can see that this vestibule is only <coughs> maybe 10 or 12 feet high. Mm -hmm. And it has glass along the edges in order to, or along the end, the end of it, in order to show what it was look, you know, you'd be able to look into it. This would be the look at the, the vestibule security turnstiles out as you go into the door, as you start going into the building. And then as you look at the entrance on the edges and on the ends, there's actually entrances on both ends, the west end and the east end. This is the west entry elevation. You can see it's just simply a man door. <coughs> so um, that is about it, Mr. Chairman. I, I open it, any questions? Okay, well, um, I, I've already done, looked at this extensively and spoke with uh, Danielle about it in the past. So, does anybody else have any comments or questions? You got anything, Chris? You okay with it? Yeah, well, so you've got two entrances on that walkway, that covered walkway or new building. Um, which entrance are the people going to go into? Are they going to go into the long entrance or are they going to go into the quick entrance? You well, understand what I'm saying? I do. I do understand what you're saying. Let me, let me throw that drawing back up again. So, so I think, so over here, I think this is, I think what we were talking about. Over here, there's, there's not that much parking in the back. If we kept going south, this is trucks. This is all the truck docks down here. So most of the parking, when I was there, the day I was there with the operations manager, most of the people were coming in from the left as we're looking at this plan. So from the west side, because 
and that's where the majority of the parking appeared to be. And I was so, there probably at 10 o'clock in the morning. So where, where is the entrance into the building from? Right here. Right in the kind of the middle. So yep. you, you're building this 80 foot long piece, but they're not gonna have 80 feet to stand in. They've got 25 feet before the door because they're gonna all enter the door on your left. Doesn't make sense to me. If, you, if you're doing that for social distancing to keep six feet apart, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm gonna guesstimate since that building is 80 feet long, you got about maybe 30 feet. So you got five people before you're outside again. You've lost the other, ten, the other 50 feet of the building because you're letting them come in the wrong side. You're asking us to do something to, to, make, it, to, to make it safer for people while they have to line up to get tested to get into the building and you're not utilizing the room that you have to do it properly. You follow what I'm saying? I, I do, I do know what you're saying. Um, not not um, ducking the question, but, but the architect, you know, the architects and the operations people looked at this and this is what they thought was a viable option for the work, for what's gonna happen down there. So well, the, I, I know what you're saying, I hear it, um, but I, all I could tell you is, is, you know, the guys who, the operations people who know how it works, who are spending the money, do think well, it's a viable. Well, I don't know. The operations people don't always know how it works. Because I look at this immediately and I'm saying, you, you have lost two thirds of the building you're building for social distancing. If this is in fact for that reason, it should have been designed and constructed properly. It should be designed and constructed properly so that you can get social distancing in there. You can't, because you can't have two rows because it's not wide enough. You have to have, it's gonna be a single row and they're gonna come in on the left and they're gonna have five people and you're done. Well, you know, so, and, and you know, this, does, this is a minor modification. If we don't say yes, it doesn't go anywhere. Um, and I think your architect, it has not thought this through properly for what you're asking for and the reason you're asking for it. That's my problem. And it makes, it sets, starts to set precedence. We start to do things for, for the issue that we have, which is an important issue. And I believe in social distancing and keeping people apart, but you're not doing it the right way here. Well, I guess, they, we can, I guess we can agree to disagree. Um, these are the people who are, they know how their operation works. Uh, they're spending the money. I don't think they would spend the money. Uh, wildly That's fine. Or I, I, think, I think with that, with that answer, Bill, I got my answer. It's okay. Okay. I we would Thank you. disagree. I, That's okay. You can disagree. You don't have to agree with me. Okay. One of the, um, so could, let me just speak to that issue for a minute. Um, I do understand um, what you're saying, Chris, and, uh, but I, I guess the question that I had that I, did, I didn't get a chance to ask before was, you know, how many people actually enter the building at any given point? I mean, how many people work in this, are gonna come through this on a daily basis? Do you have any idea, Bill, how many that people? Is a good, I, I do not know, know that answer. No, I don't. And I don't know so, how they're, there's I mean, if you're talking out. seven people or 12 people on a shift, they can easily, there's plenty of room for them to line up. So right. one of the other uh, possibilities would be to, um, is, there, is there room, because this, the scale is so small, it's hard to see, but um, is there, if the people parked uh, where the current handicap spots are, could they, is there a place for them to walk to the right as we're looking at this and come in that other entrance? Yes. So this is the way it, it is. So as you see this yellow that you see here now over here where my hand is going back and forth, that's those are the existing parking spaces. Yeah, so, there are, so there were two handicapped spaces right at the this entrance. Is this is yeah, all um, striped out. So you can walk around and you can enter through this walkway here, over here to the right. 
but there's no other way to get to that walkway other than walking around the green space or through well, the green space. If, if, if you are parked over here on the left mm -hmm. um, to walk, you can walk around on the pavement or you can walk over in the green space. And what you can do here on any of these spaces is just step over the green and, and go up here. But there are parking spaces down here to the right. And you can see some of them um, as you move further to the south, there are, it is a, uh, is loading docks, but there is parking down here to the right. So um, the two things that occurred to me is that if, um, that you may be able to modify this slightly with signage on the left side that says that, you know, once, once you reach uh, the distancing, you have to go to the other end. They're not going to uh, do that. And, and the other thing would be to create um, a more convenient walkway that goes uh, um, from the um, right side of that, the left side of that green space over to the walkway. So, so that somebody getting out, in a, that if, when you restripe that area for standard parking spots, that somebody got out right there, they could easily walk to that uh, left-hand uh, walkway. And that would give them the opportunity to, and you could even put a sign there saying that anybody that parks there, please go to the, the uh, left and enter on that entry. So in other words, if you, I, Chris's point is well taken in that you, in that you, if you're trying to uh, provide a, the social distancing, um, not not putting something there that that um, actually accomplishes the goal looks like lip service, as opposed to reality. I think that's what. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, but I think that's what you are. Concerned. Oh yeah, yeah. And I mean, it, it's it's interesting that we don't know how many people are going to access this building on a shift. Yeah, uh, it, it's it just doesn't make sense to me. We're in, unprepared for this meeting, or maybe for the questions. But the, changing a building like this for the reasoning, you need to have those answers. And I don't have them. I really don't. Hmm. So I really the don't. Answer, the question, the, so the, answer, the questions that you're asking the, the, is, how many people are coming in at any one time? Yeah. How many people are working a shift? Because a shift starts at a specific time. This is not the only entrance to the building, though. So is, why are we, the, why, why aren't we doing this on every entrance of the building? I, I don't know what the other entrance is. It's amazing. See, that, you're, it's, it's, it's coming to us unprepared. And I'm sorry, they, they, they let you come unprepared to this meeting. You know, this is a large building. It's two floors, if I'm not mistaken. I forget how many square feet it is. Um, we've actually, they've actually made changes to this because the parking wasn't enough. So they changed parking here, increased the parking because they increased the amount of employees inside the building to be able to build their robots. They were, they were in front of us a year and a half or two years ago for that. Now they're coming for this, and you don't have the answers because they weren't supplied to you. Okay. And so, so the questions, I just want to make sure that I understand the questions so that I can get you the answers. So the question is, how many people are coming in this door during a shift? How many people are in the, how many people are in the build, come into the building for per shift? And how many people are going to use this door? And I guess the, uh, it would certainly beg the question, what are they doing at the other doors? Do they already have some way of attracting yeah. people at the other doors? Exactly. Yeah, so I wasn't clear on that. I, I was under the impression that this was the door and that, they were, that everybody was coming through here and in in getting uh, checked and, and um, tested or whatever and then sent on in. And they were that so... And the reason we had this covered area was to provide shelter for them so that as they waited, their turn to go in. That was kind of the way I understood this. That, that was my feeling also, Warren. 
I think David wants to say something. No, no, I, I, the, I wouldn't mind seeing a little bit more uh, pullback of this. To, I have an aerial of the of the 300. I just want to know where exactly that is. I'm, I'm not connecting the dots with what I'm looking at. Do you have a, do you have a shot of the entire building? Um, I mean, I could call up Google Earth for you right now. Sure. That way. Yeah, that'd be fine. Cause I don't, I don't know what I'm looking at and that's my problem. <laughs> yeah. That, that old as built is old, the old plan. It doesn't even have the proper parking on it, I don't think. Does it have the parking changes that we did on it? Uh, it's from 01. No, that it doesn't have the changes. doesn't have the on changes it. on it. I mean, they didn't supply us with the newest, and they must have had one. We, we, don't, we have to get a drawing for everything. Yeah, it has built. Yeah. So uh, the, 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 um, the people who did the design for this must have had some kind of criteria for doing the design. I mean, they had to have asked the same questions we just asked. I'm, I'm sure they did. And I apologize that the architect is not here. He had to cancel at the very last minute, about six o'clock. He had something that he had to go to. It sounded like a family issue. So I have the, uh, I'm calling up the drawing. Well, my perception of this was that it was something we could do to help the employees, you know, to provide them with shelter and everything. I thought we'd be doing a good thing here, but, <laughs> but now I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Let's see if I can call this up now. Um, I could share the screen. Can we see that? Yep. Okay. Yep. So this is the building. This is the building here, and I know it's. Yep. Tough to see, but um, so the entrance that we're talking about is over here, okay. north, down in this area. So here is the parking over here to the left of the building. You can see the parking in the rear of the building, and there's actually some more along the back area. Okay, that's helpful just to give me a, a locus of where you're talking about. Yeah. Okay, where is where where would be the other entrances? Uh, I think the main entrance is up here. Now the main entrance, would <coughs> the employees come in that main entrance or, or do they, or is that main entrance for visitors and executives and so forth? I do not, I don't have that level of detail information, so I, I can't answer that. Yeah, because it looks like to the right of the building there, by with a, with a dot loading dock side, it looks like there's, um, um, quite a few parking spots over there, almost more than over by the door. Yes, that's what so I was saying that would earlier. Encourage more of the people to, you know, that may you, we may hear that the reason that there's a longer corridor on that side because there are more parking spots for employees on that side of the building. Well, I think what they were trying to do was was to max out. You know, they went to the end of the building and then brought it up as far as was they thought was appropriate coming past it. So, um, you know, they didn't want to go any further in order for, you know, just for make sure for structural reasons, you want to tie it into the end of the building. Well, but, if we find that they have a timed uh, arrival as well, you know, where there's a timed arrival, I mean, it, you, you know, it wouldn't be unthinkable to do that. But these are questions that somebody that uh, understood the reason for the design would, would be able to answer that, that, uh, that you know would be good if that person was there. So I hesitate to make it to drag the whole thing out because you know again the weather is coming. The, the whole reason you're doing this is coming. But you see what I mean, Chris? The parking on that right side of the building is. No, I, I, 
I kind of knew where it was, Warren, because I'm looking at the old look at the the old uh, layout, and I do understand the, the 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 building a little bit better than David, and I understand where David was lost because it's a large yeah. building. It's not yeah. hard to get lost looking at it, especially right. with with 19 year old plans we're looking at, and it's changed. Can I? Um, I'm sorry. I should say too. I I put it in the old plan just so you could see what you were modifying from the original. Original that wasn't a, that. I just I stuck that in. So as far as the age of the plan goes, that's that okay. was my addition. All right. <laughs> yeah, well, it seems to me a more than adequate done uh, quite a few uh, um, cars, a uh, parking for quite a few cars on the right side of the building, and actually more. I mean, I don't know if there's another entrance inside that square on the left side of the building. There, there is, there is a visitor entrance in the cutout. I know that because they asked for that, and there's handicapped parking in there now. We had the newer, the newer layout drawing. There should be at least. Um, but I still don't understand what their shifts are and how things are going to work because there is a lot of parking in the corner. If this is the only entrance they use, well, I can conceive for the employees. I can conceive of a few answers, but I certainly would like the real ones. Yeah, me too. Me too. I, I just, you know, it, it doesn't. Why don't we, why don't we just pin, pin down the, it, I think I understand the questions that you have. And then what I'll do is I will either, well, I will probably the next time we'll bring the operations person and they'll be able to um, now brief them on the questions that you have. And if you have any other questions that come up, you can, uh, you know, talk to Danielle. She could forward them to me. And then the next time we come in, we will be uh, better prepared to answer the questions that obviously I wasn't expecting. Yeah. Well, my only uh, my only hesitation was that it certainly would put off because it might be at least two weeks. I don't know. Do we have another meeting scheduled for the two week period or? Danielle? We don't currently, but we can, I mean, we can, we, we certainly can look at our schedule. Um, take a look at the next, what well, would actually, be the next? Gonna, we may, we may change that. We may change the next two weeks after our, one of our other agenda items tonight. So, okay. so um, I would say that for now, let's, uh, um, let's, Maybe give them next schedule our next regularly scheduled meeting. Our next December regular 1. meeting. Oh, December first is our next regular meeting. Yeah, is that okay with everybody, Chris? Yeah. yeah. So, um, and again, we may put something else in there for how we look at some of these things. So, okay, Bill, is that that's going to be your uh, that will be your your day? Um, hopefully, you can. Uh, answer some of those questions and maybe bring somebody along that's a little more familiar with uh, what the thought process that went into the design of this. We will do that. Okay. All right. So uh, we're just going to table this for now then. And um, we look forward to seeing you next time, Bill. Okay, great. Thank you very much. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. Um, it's not that I don't want to help the employees out, but I got to know what's going on. Yeah, well, I did. That, that's I, a little more than that, Chris. You were you were certainly correct on on to pick up on that, but um, the uh, when I looked at it, it looked like they were like everybody was coming in from the right, not from the left. Well, that's what I thought too. Yeah, that's what I thought too, and it didn't make sense because I know the load, loading docks are back there. Yeah, there's so a lot of cars coming in from the right. That's fine. Yeah, it, there's mm -hmm. a lot of cars back there, but yeah. you know, it, it it didn't make any sense to me. It didn't make any sense to me. <clears throat> and I I read his the letter, and it, the the letter was like so legal, it was unbelievable. He he must have had a lawyer write it. <laughs> his right. introduction letter. Okay, so. we we want to have a discussion on public hearings. We got that. Um, um, as our next agenda item here, and uh, and wow, you know it's it's actually um, timely because it seems that um, since we put this on the agenda, 
things have gone from bad to worse. <laughs> and yeah. all of a sudden, I wonder, whose idea was this? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Cold weather I, started. That's what happened. I first started, uh, I wrote up the memo, and then in the time that I wrote the memo until uh, yesterday, they um, actually finalized this. So, um, I mean, I, 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 I spoke with uh, Phil, who was very helpful in letting me know how NORCAM can be of assistance to people either trying to get onto a Zoom meeting or if we did find a way to have a meeting in person um, as far as making sure that we had, you know, the technology to do that. Um, but I think that the headline here is that the hold on public hearings is, is ending um, as of December 1st. So one way or another, um, we do need to figure out how we'll be doing our hearings. Um, I, after looking at the possible spaces we have available to us, I don't have a viable space for us to use um, because of the limitation of 25 people on in-person gatherings, um, there not being any overflow space in the town hall, the high school not being available to us during the week, and um, the fact that we're not allowed to tell the first 25 people who come, or the first, I guess, 25 minus uh, six or seven, <laughs> if you count everybody, um, that they can come in, but then the, that the next 30 people can't come in. If, if that many people should show up for a hearing, we can't pick and choose you know, who can stay and who can go. So that's... Well, we tend, from a practical point of view, we tend not to have 30 people, even at some of right. our more contentious hearings. That's so true. it has to be something pretty outlandish in order to create that. So let me ask you about the, about in town hall, the gym down there. Mm -hmm. Since we don't have a food pantry there anymore, we have, um, I know they have a couple things they do there, but that certainly provides adequate space, but uh, but what it doesn't do, it doesn't have the air handling system. So it really, it's really... It doesn't have a PA either. I, I think so. After discussing with Phil, if we were to try to set up in there, and Phil obviously jump in if you, uh, if I'm missing anything, the way for people to really fully participate would be if they each had a device, because it's not set up for audio. So... Right people won't be able to hear each other and have it picked up on a Zoom hearing at the same time. It, it just wouldn't, that wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. And we, while we don't think that we would have more than 25 people in the room, um, you know, say we were all here, um, you know, say that was only 18 or 19 people to show, we might, we might have a hearing like that. And if that happens, we can't have the hearing because we well, can't. Well, I, I agree, but, but I mean, I, I suppose it would be one of those hearings that got canceled, uh, that would just get canceled at the last minute, similar to if uh, if, a, if a quorum didn't show up. I mean, I mean, we got to we got to we got to we got to pick a plan, and then live with the consequences. I mean, that's basically <coughs> what the deal is right now. I think my recommendation would be that we just do these over Zoom. I think the access yeah. will be better. I think the safety will be better, um, and I think that I really appreciate um, NORCAM's offer to help people who may need technology help, um, we could put in a hearing notice um, the phone number to, to call NORCAM if they... Let me, uh, let me ask you this. Um, um, if NORCAM puts it out on the uh, TV live, mm -hmm. then everybody in the world can watch the, the, hit the meeting. Mm -hmm. And then all you really would need would be some... Um, one person whose job is to take phone calls or to take input from somebody, perhaps. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I mean, but because that would be... People have the tech, uh, because we're not talking about everybody, because a lot of the people are going to have the technology to do the Zoom. Right. Okay, okay but there's right. going to be some number that can't. But mm -hmm. They can probably watch it on their TV and pick up their phone if they have a question or a comment. Yes, so that is absolutely part of how you can operate the Zoom meeting. I mean, it can be shown. Um, you only need a phone to participate. So that's something that we can tell people about. Um, the other thing, you know, that Phil and I spoke about was the possibility that we let people know that the that the hearing would be broadcast again at a future date. And Warren, I think you and I talked about this a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. And we could give them the date and time it was going to be broadcast. And then we would be able to tell people if you should have comments, please send them in. One thing town council told me don't, don't do is you can't say the hearing is going to be continued to allow for more comments. You can't say that right off the bat. No, you can't notice. do that. Well, I yeah. mean, we'd have to, we, we, you know, you know, that would to some extent um, 
we wouldn't really be able to take a vote at, uh, at that night because we would we would then be disenfranchising people who might have a valid comment if we allow mm -hmm. if we if we if we have that as a as a, a possibility for them. In other right. words, if the process allows people to comment something after we've already heard it, heard it and voted on it, what's the point? Mm -hmm. uh, no, exactly. But we what we can't do is say in a hearing that some and we, what we can't do is saying in the hearing notice that something will be continued. I think as a matter of policy, we can just continue them, of course. But we can't tell people ahead of time that the hearing will be continued. At least that's what I was told. But I think it's fine to, you know, if we do this over Zoom and we let people know that there are other technology options, such as watching it on a broadcast, such as calling in by the telephone, such as calling NORCAM ahead of time to, um, you know, help them understand the technology, um, I, I think we can make this work. I, I don't really think we can make the in-person meeting work. I, I think that that's, I think that's going to be really hard. No, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm uh, pretty, I'm pretty clear on that, yeah. Um, yeah, we're going to have to do something, but I'm just trying to think of what the most effective way of doing it is. Uh, I mean, go ahead, Chris. Some of, some of it might be, uh, and I mentioned this before, would, I mean, if it's not a huge project, like, two, was it 239 North yeah. Street? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, is to, you know, get an early notice out to the abutters that are going to, you know, the affected people, people right there in that little neighborhood, that, hey, we're going to have, you know, there's going to be a public hearing. This is what's going to happen, you know, and, and give them some information on paper-wise and <laughs> tell them that if they have an issue and they can't join the Zoom meeting, that they should send a letter to us and it needs to be, or they can drop it off at the town hall. It needs to be at the town hall by give them a, a drop-dead date so that we can all see it like the Thursday before the meeting. And that's what we always did with other things. So it means you have to get it out two weeks ahead of time. So they have time to put a, a letter together. And I mean, some people who can't make the meetings in the old days would send a letter. Mm -hmm. I can yeah. remember. People I can don't do that much anymore. Yeah, but they no. can. Absolutely. No. I, used to, I remember reading letters, Warren, into the into Oh, yeah, the, we did that in, many, uh, plenty of Into time. the record. Many, many, Multiple many letters. letters. Some of those subdivisions, I remember. Yeah. <laughs> and now we don't, we don't get that. I haven't seen that in well, five years, at least. So, so let me just bring up another issue, and that is that if we allow after the meeting comment, then every single decision is going to be a two meeting, a two meeting decision. That's correct. Where we go through everything, and then we collect the comments, and then the next meeting where we either deal with all the comments and then vote, or end up putting it off to another meeting for a vote. Right. So that's what, that's why sending the letter we, ahead of time we would not be while we would not be denying anybody the right to their public hearing it would certainly add a lot of time and a lot of effort on to making the decision right and and it may stretch it may stretch out timelines we're going to have to ask for extensions on some things yeah are you doing a and r we got what 30 days from the time it's accept uh it it comes in danielle 21 21 days and that's, that's for public hearing so i'm not so concerned about public. that's true that's true but but it's that's just one that's just one thing and we do get comments on those things occasionally people do show up mm -hmm. um so you, we just have to be careful i agree with you warren we've got to be very careful i you know i personally think sending the information to people ahead of time and it may entice them to join a zoom meeting mm -hmm. or watch it on tv if 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 oh, norcam can get that together um, okay, watch so that. let's go back to, um, so let's, let's, uh, so the decision, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm gathering that our decision here is that we're going to give this Zoom meeting for a public hearing a try. Is that what you want to do, Danielle? We'll give it, it a try. Is. Okay. Yeah, I think it's our best solution. Would you have a trial balloon? <laughs> yeah, we've got to do something. Yeah, it's the North Street Project, yeah. Uh -huh. oh. Debbie has um, something to say. Well, I just wanted to say that uh, all the other departments have been doing all their meetings on Zoom, and I haven't heard any complaints from anyone. And also, Conservation has, 239 North Street has already gone in front of Conservation, and they're actually waiting for the CPC to uh, have the public hearing. And so they keep continuing 239 North Street. Um, just to let you know that. <laughs> They won't do anything more until so you. So is that is that one that we should uh, we should bring forth, Danielle? 
It is. I mean, they applied back in, I think, March or April, and I know they, they have checked back about monthly to, to ask if we've changed so our stance on this. So we could put on our December 1st meeting? So we'd have to advertise it. Um, so I think December 15th is the earliest we would be able to hear that um, okay. because we still have to send out a butter notices and advertise. So. Uh, but yeah, we can do that. That would be our first one. And that, that would, if you started that now, Danielle, you could get those letters to the abutters asking for comment via mail if they don't feel comfortable on joining the meeting. Yeah, I mean, having something three weeks ahead of time and letting them know, um, one, that the plans are posted online, or two, I suppose people could make an appointment to come to the town hall still, because we're used to telling people that they can come view the plans in town hall. Um, but they could if they needed to, um, as long as they call first. Um, but yeah, giving people plenty of time would be would be fine. Now, wait a minute, you're going to let people into town hall to look at plans? Well, if people want to make an appointment, they can be allowed in to do something specific and then leave. They can't just drop in. So I don't, I, I have to find out what, what the policy is about that. I'll find so out what letter, they Your letter to the abutters, aside from a notification, mm -hmm. you're going to have to have another page which talks about how to access Zoom and how to access Town Hall to view plans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we can, um, I mean, it's definitely going to be posted on the website because that's what the requirement is right now. But for people yeah. who might not be able to access that, I'll, I'll just find out what our, what our correct protocol okay. would be. For, for so is everybody, uh, Dave, you are comfortable with uh, December 15th getting a, uh, doing our first uh, Zoom public hearing? Yeah. All right. Um, go ahead. No, I just said, yeah, definitely. Okay, good. Okay, uh, Chris, you? Uh, I have no problem. We okay. got to do. I think we need to do it sometime. I'm not. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, we can. Um, we can also, if we, you know, if if we don't have anything else for that December first meeting, we end up pushing them off to the fifteenth. I mean, I don't know. I hate to push them off because, again, it's supposed to be for the comfort of their employees, and so I appreciate the attempt. So it's a little half-hearted. I did want to mention, just with regard to December 1st, there was another thing I was hoping to put on the agenda. Um, Abacus is asking okay. to meet with us again because they have further developed their concept plan and would like to come in and talk to us. So we can schedule that for December 1st and have okay. that plus so we have, uh, more than one thing on the meeting. Yeah. Yeah, that would be good. And, you know, only a couple things on a meeting, unless we really need to, is a good idea, I think. Yeah. You know, because it, it, it is, it, it is, I think it's more of a strain looking at your computer um, and, and talking through the computer. It's, it's a little more difficult than in person. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'd like to hear from them again. Okay. All right. Are we all set with that then? Yeah. Um, okay. I'm sorry. I was looking at the calendar, just try, trying to make sure that I had enough time to advertise uh, 239 North. So I missed what you guys said about December 1st. Would, um, oh, well, December 1st. Well, she just has something else she wants to put on there. Which we're, and we're gonna, we'll put Buckley on December 1st as well. So there'll be just, just a couple of things on the meeting. The 15th, <laughs> the 15th for, for 239. Fifth, okay. All right. Okay. That should give you enough time, right? Three weeks, three or four weeks. Well, enough time, yeah. Yes. So yeah, if we did the legal notice over the course of this week, yeah, that's that would be plenty of time. For make, making sure they can come um, too. Yeah, I'll ask them. <laughs> the legal notice won't go into the paper until the twenty sixth, November twenty sixth. Well, we'll that's Thanksgiving. Well, they have early. They, they'll they have, early. have an early. It would probably go in on Wednesday then. Um, I don't. I yeah. can't get. I don't think I can get it in this week. I mean, no, I mean it's too late. It has to be advertised two two times. I, yeah, I you can get the twenty, week. the twenty fifth. Uh, the it'll be the twenty fifth and the third. Probably. And even if even if we did the fifteenth, they, they'll do the third and the tenth. So there's enough time. No, well, we can't do the third and the tenth. No, we ha can't do the tenth. It has to be a full week that passes before the meeting. Oh, and okay. And it's only a Thursday to a Tuesday. Oh, okay. Um, okay. I just, I, we should double check the deadlines, though, for early submission for yeah. Thanksgiving. I did yeah, see that, that, but tomorrow. I didn't. That's mm -hmm. tomorrow. 
I can. I'll no, call no, she can tomorrow. do it. Oh, okay, okay. We can check that tomorrow. Okay. If we have to put it off for the next meeting, I, I mean, then we'll just have to. No, at least we'll get started. We'll get started in the process. Yeah. We'll see how this one goes, okay. and if it goes good, we'll look at the next one. Yeah. And okay. we can always go to the next week too. It's not like we're going to run out yeah. of meeting room space. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unless someone's going to be in our rooms in our houses. Right. <laughs> we all have such busy social calendars. It's hard to squeeze these in. <laughs> that's but, true. Yeah, yeah. All right. So that's uh, that's the deal. If we can get it all done, we will. Oh, get out. Uh, Sorry. Um, <laughs> Don't worry so, about uh, it. The next oh, item that we have is to point uh, appoint an EDC member to represent the CPC. Chris's term expired when his CPC term did. So now we're short a CPC representative on the EDC. So um, I was hoping we could take care of that tonight. Dave, you want to be an EDC member? I wish I had the time. <laughs> I'm doing everything uh, I can just to make these meetings. Yeah. I guess it I guess it's gonna default back to me, huh? Yeah, I hate to say that, Chris. I hate to make you. Uh, that's not really all right. To say I mean, that. <laughs> don't don't hate to say it. I mean, I know. I I I was I was the I was a. Uh, what was it? Not um, associate member. An associate member for years, so I wanted to stay on the information, but I didn't have to be at a meeting if I could, if I had to miss one. So I just have to go to the meetings. That's all. Or yeah, they, attend they, they the must meetings. be doing Zoom meetings also. Yeah, we did one today. We had the first one today. Oh, oh, EDC? Yeah. We hadn't met since March. I was just kind of handling anything that came in, but it, we, pretty it, hard it was to time. Do, pretty hard to do much with the EDC with these conditions. It is. It's tricky. It's tricky. I mean, any just like in terms of assistance to businesses and whatever information we get, I mean, maybe, but right now it's, yeah, you can't do any, anything in person really, yeah. so. Right. Okay, you will to take that on again, Chris? Yeah, I'll do it. All right, there you go. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> no problem. We're Takes the pressure off of Danielle, basically. Is what yeah, we, can't, we can't let this go by the wayside. It's done some good, I think, yeah, in the last yeah. couple, three years. Yeah. You know? All right, let's do the minutes of 10-2020. Um, we have a motion or? Let, let me get there. Okay. Okay. Um, just. You don't have to vote Chris into the EDC? Yeah, yeah you do actually have to. Yeah, yeah, you do. Thank you, Debbie. Okay. Somebody needs to make a motion. Dave, you're going to have to make a motion. <laughs> or, or Danielle, read it. Dave can. can... I'll still move. <laughs> okay. Um, I move to, uh, to, uh, to nominate uh, Chris no Hayden. Point. Appoint, excuse me, appoint yeah. Chris Hayden um, onto the Economic Development Committee as the Community Development, as the Community Planning Commission's representative member. So moved. And I guess I'll have to second it. <laughs> You'll have to second it, Warren. I can't yeah. second that. Yeah, I know. I'll second it's, it. So uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Let the record show three in favor, no opposed. So, I'll leave uh, vote. Thanks, Deb. <laughs> You're welcome. You know yeah, I never vote for right, myself, right. Warren, but I did that time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Danielle, can you find out what I have to do to get sworn in for this? I yes. guess I'll have to go see Barbara. Yeah, I um, they uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, we'll find out. I maybe think I think I have to on, see Maybe Barbara. you can do it on Zoom. Who knows? No, I don't think so. I had to I had to go see her a, after I was elected. The election, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll find out so. For you. Um, yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. So we don't have any ZBAs. Um, so I guess that gets us down to whether or not you have any updates, Danielle, that we haven't already talked about. Uh, um, you have to go back and do the minutes. Oh, the minutes. Oh, Mr. Yeah, Pierce. Yeah. Mr. Hayden. I move that we accept the minutes of Tuesday, October 20th, 2020, as written. Okay. I'll second. Dave's going to second it. So uh, I have a discussion item. Okay, go ahead, Chris. If I'll bring it up for you, sir. You, you caught it first before I did. Uh, you have to get uh, the, <laughs> the clerk in on the uh, top it's of this. Already, already done. 
Okay, you already <laughs> corrected that. Okay. Yeah. I told then, you about it earlier today, so. <sighs> oh, you all set? I'm yeah. set. Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, let the record show three in favor, no opposed. And uh, okay, so Danielle, any uh, any updates or anything you want to go through? Or are we uh, about as updated as we're going to be? We're we're pretty updated. I mean, I, yeah. I am continuing just to work on you know the Carpenter Drive project with Dave. Um, continuing to work on finishing the e-permitting setup for the other town departments. Uh, continuing to get information out to the businesses about whatever uh, grant programs uh, come our way. Continuing just to offer support to help them apply if they need to, um, and uh, that's that's most of I think what's been what's been coming through. And I did I think I put in my memo just a couple of just a heads up about a couple of possible applications to be coming in. Uh, Reading Lumber has expressed that they're mm -hmm. uh, well they're working on an application right now to um, that's going to be another public hearing coming up uh, at some point soon. So um, I guess that's, I think we talked about most of the other things. Abacus, um, I will yes. send uh, their updated information. Um, they, they just sent me um, so that we can take a look before December 1st and have a discussion with them about yeah. it. So we don't, we have just, just a quick thought. I mean, we have really the only real, we got the two subdivisions going, the one on Elm Street and the one over off of Park there. So um, those are pretty much going along the way they, um, to some extent, the way they should. Yeah. So the one that stalled is that Charles Street one stalled. Yeah. Do we have any? Do we have any? Um, Eaton like, Drive still. Do anything there left? I mean, I mean. Yeah, their bond. We have their bond. I mean, yeah. if we want to start talking about taking steps to finish it, um, you know, it's we could do that. I know the DPW is not going to like it. <laughs> it's never ideal for us to have to do that, but we no. can talk about it. I, I mean, we don't want it to sit that way forever. When does it bond? So, um, I mean, I mean, the, the one we, the ones we have taken we had people living in them, and 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 so we we had to take them because we had to because we had people living in them. They right. already built and sold the houses, yeah. and I, that's not happened with Charles Street yet. So that's right. So, uh, so that, so I don't know that we really need to do a taking. I was more concerned about the fact that it's going to be um, that there's a lot it, that it's kind of like a an open wound up there, if you know what I mean. It's all uh, tore up and it's uh, you know and it's kind of sitting there, going nowhere. And there are there's drainage systems and things like that that we're going to go through another winter on that do input, impact our downstream drainage and you know from that site. Uh, so heaven only knows, um, and I know that the other subdivisions are moving a lot more slowly than you would thought they would have. Um, but um, um, not sure why that is. But so could I ask the town engineer to tell me if he thinks there's anything that needs to be done to further stabilize the site. And just yeah, I think that was my only concern, and whether or not we were still holding a bond on it, and whether or not. Oh yeah. You know, and what's what's going on with it? You know, so, the bond um, is just cash that's sitting in the treasurer's office. I mean, it's not even a letter of credit or a tripartite agreement. It's just it's just money. Cash. Wow. Yeah. Um, when does that bond come up? It's because I mean, it's cash. Us, there's no date on it. I mean, it's just there's no expiration on cash. And if there is, that's yeah. Really well, no. I mean, right now. I mean, there is there is a document too, isn't there? That goes along with that. What what? Not that, the same as a tripartite or or a, or a bond, okay. actual bond, well, because um, those have to be reviewed by the lending institutions. And since there's no lending institution, doesn't need to be reviewed. Right, but that then leaves us open. The longer it, the longer it's not finished the bond correct so no longer recall, is valuable well if you recall what we did in the past is when we got too far down the road on one of these we wanted to redo the bond to include right. the clerk of the work right and that's what i was going to talk about i yeah. was going to say that so mm. what do we do with this because you know we've been holding that money for what six years now daniel yeah. Five or six years? No. How long, Debbie? You know. I don't think so. I think it's only been about. I'm not good with the timing, but I'm going to say probably two years or less. 
Okay. Yeah, because and he, it, uh, it, he had, I think he did have a bond, he had a higher bond and then we gave him some money back and then the next thing was he gave us the cash. Well, okay. he had two bonds. One we yeah. took because of the offsite work that had to be done. Right. Then right. On Charles Street, yeah, down lower Charles Street, yeah. Yeah, and it took him a long time to get to the point of being able to even give us a bond because we were not at the point we could release lots because the other work wasn't done. Right. So that only happened maybe two years ago. Yeah. Okay. I don't think we've had the large bond for all that long, and I don't think we've Almost that we've released any of maybe we released a very small amount of it. I'd have to go back to the records. And yeah, look. I think we did You're release right, some of the money. Yeah, yeah, for what he had. So done. we we yeah. you, we might want to keep it just a uh, a bit of an eye on that. So we're not um, holding you know an empty bag here to finish that up, especially well, if he I mean, gets yeah, it I built. Would, um, yeah, I would probably. I would probably ask the town engineer just to take a drive through and, and or a walk yeah. through or whatever and just make sure that as we go into the winter that we don't have any conditions there that are that are uh, that need to be addressed. Yeah, no, that that makes total sense. Absolutely. Yeah, and the, I mean the other subdivisions are going slowly, but they are but they're working and they're building and they're going along. Yeah, so uh, you know. 77 uh, Elm, did that get uh, asphalt? I know they were putting yeah, they got hot, they base got down. Yeah, so now, they're gonna, now we're gonna set a bond for them, right? Cause they're gonna be looking for yeah. building permits. Well, the, no, the one thing yeah. they have to be very careful of because they got a lot of sl steep slopes on that site. So yes, the they do. They, one thing they gotta be really careful of coming into this winter season is to make sure their drainage culverts are, everything is protected. Every, that, that everything has been uh, hay bailed or whatever so so that we don't get a washout in the street. Yeah, and then we might. Um, Warren, are you talking about Elm? Yeah. Yeah. It, one yes. thing I noticed, it didn't look like that was binder. It looked like it was milling they put down. Mm. Yes, they, that, was a, that was the base for it, I think, Dave. They're um, paving oh, on they, Wednesday. Got it. Okay, thanks, Debbie. Yeah, because it, like, it, it didn't look like, you know, a yeah. binder. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm wondering if they're going to set their rims at, at binder grade because we're, we're doing that on a bunch of jobs and that's, that's, you know, it's a lot more work to go raise the lids after, but it's better if you get snow plows, not clipping. Oh yeah. Snow plows, sure. clipping them in the water, just and running around. The water. Yeah. yeah. You gotta, you gotta do it sometime. That's part of living in New England and not making the dates, you know, you right. gotta, Re remember, you know, you can, uh, if you put some downstream hay bales on uh, um, to make sure the water goes in those catch basins, so yeah. Uh, remember I mean, when uh, McIntyre didn't do that, and we got that Mother's Day I don't know, it was Mother's Day storm yeah, or whatever, yeah. and we washed out. Yeah. And uh, after that, we had him put set his rims at binder. He said it was cheaper doing that, yeah, than having to take care of the aftermath if Mother mess, Nature takes right. over. Right. So we should well, check on that. Already can. had an issue at his site, so we are, so I think we're making sure. Hopefully, we're making sure that that one is uh, also. Um, Maybe we should talk to Dave uh, Giagrandi about that, Danielle. I'll do that. Sure. Please. I, yeah. I will I've say, just been Dave, about all Dave's on going top into of the winter, it. So. I'm sorry. Dave's been out there quite a bit, so and he's aware of the paving and everything. So. Yeah. 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 Okay. Right, That's no, good. So I just wanted to bring that up tonight because I've been thinking about all these things that we go into the winter and then yeah. we did have troubles with some of the weather with at Dave Murray subdivision there. So Yeah, you um, did. So we want it so it's probably it behooves us to not ignore it, to take a just take a quick we'll look around, make yeah. sure that everything's prepared for the winter. Yeah. Uh, what's what's left at Eaton Circle, Danielle? Do you know? Like uh, two or three houses? I can't remember if it's two or three. Oh, I have, I have to check. I get the, it looks like they got the right side built and they're in the back of the cul-de-sac. I think there may be one more that they got to, they get over there. Yeah, it's all right. I mean, the good thing about that one is that's all pretty level land there, you know, so. Yeah, but they're right in the water table. Yeah. That, that front pond is right. It's a wet pond. Yeah, that's okay. I mean, they, but, but they're not gonna, it's not gonna come out into the street. It's, if they have an issue, it's gonna be on their dime. Yeah. So. That was, that's my, that was my, the other ones are a concern. Oh yeah. No, no, I agree with you, Warren. And you know, if you remember that approval uh, of, um, of the Charles Street extension, how much, I mean, how an elaborate of a water system there is up there. 
Oh yeah, I was up there. So, I was up I mean, there in yeah. August, and you could hear the water running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the water at the end of the, at the at the end of the existing Charles Street right now. Water runs in that uh, manhole there, in that catch basin. And the water's running into it from the pipes coming from that area all the time. Yep. I, I've seen it. I don't care. For the, I've been up there a number of years in a row in the middle of August or whatever, and there's always water coming in there. And the guy at the end there will tell you that it, tra it runs constantly. Yeah. Which is good. It feeds the wetland down there. They like it, so I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's good for the wetland. Yeah, yeah. So uh, anyway, okay, that was, that was all. I just have been thinking about that and thought we might want to just take a look around before the winter comes, you know, while we're thinking about it. Yeah, that's a good idea. I, I, rem I know in past years I've asked Dave to just go around just before winter and make sure everything is in good shape. So I, I will yeah. talk to him about that. Well, it's been, it's actually, you know, we're, you know, middle of, uh, middle of November here and we're, and because we've had such nice warm weather leading up to this, we've kind of lost track, I feel, you know, so, so mm -hmm. let's take I a look. I will tell you that I get a lot of invoices for all the different developments, so Dave is on it. Yeah. <laughs> he, he has been all over town very oh, frequently. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. 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 And he always takes care of us. Yep. Yeah. He, he doesn't often send one of his engineers. He does it himself. I think, yeah, most of them coming in have his name on it. Yeah, he's been it's, running it's, out of engineers. They've been hard to find for him. So. Yeah, I'm sure. He, but he is a townie. He doesn't yeah. live in town anymore, but he's a townie at heart. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, Lewis lives in town, so. All right. If that's all, uh, if, you, if that's all we got, then we're all set. I think Maybe. that's everything. I'm looking at my list. Yeah, I think I think that's everything. Yeah, you're okay. Yep. All righty. All right. If you're all set, then uh, I guess we're all set. We'll adjourn. Oh yeah. What are we gonna have? Uh, the Selectmen are going to let us know when they're going to have our oh, meeting. Thank you for reminding me. Yes, yeah, that I was almost the forgot. I've, okay, yes, I'll so that, the right? select board <sighs> needs to schedule a joint um, a point here, a joint meeting with us to make the appointments uh, for, to the EDC. We're starting to get out. Other than me. Other than Chris, um, and those um, uh, resumes will be shared with you um, in the share file, but we also need to look at the dates for possible appointments. They don't know yet what works for them, but they think that they will be having their um, doing the appointments on December. Let me see. Vincenzo wanted the seventh. I think that's kind of. It's a little early. Might be a little I asked too early. I think it should be the next one. Yeah, the Whether 7th or the 21st. So I said I would inquire about everyone's schedule um, and let them know if December 7th or 21st uh, might work for, for us. Yeah, we have to have quorum too, so. Yeah. Right, so we just need we'll have to. We gotta, we gotta let uh, the clerk know, Ryan. Yeah, for the 21st, you say? Yeah, 7th yeah. or the 21st, one of those two, which is the weeks in between our regular meetings. Oh, that's right. Yes. Doesn't always work out that way. No, it uh, doesn't. Yeah. So, so do we need to that... pick a date? Do we, do we need to pick a date? they going to pick a date? So they just asked if I could ask you um, whether you would be available on either, you know, either or both of those dates. They haven't chosen a date yet, but I just said I would inquire about our availability. Well, it's going to be a Zoom meeting, right? So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so... Um, um, I mean, I'm not going are, anywhere, so. Got, yeah, neither one, neither am I. I'm telling you, Chris. This is really. This is Dave, maybe though. Dave, are you traveling, David? Uh, just only like once a month. The next time I travel will be early December down to uh, Charlotte again. But yeah, very little, very little. So, are you going to be around on the seventh, or is that going to be out for you? It's. Uh, let me just look right now. So that, that would be the Monday. Yeah, I don't have it booked right now, but that was kind of the target because. I think you should just let them know, Danielle, the 21st is maybe better, if that's okay with you, David. Yeah, that because I know I'm here, there. I, I might I might be gone that week. That might be the, it's kind of looking like that's the one based on the last one. And then we got to let Ryan know also. Yes. Okay. All right. I just I, I know I know that you you traveled at least once or twice. That's why I brought it up, David. Yeah. Not to pick on you. Yeah. But I'm no, picking no. on a snowman, so <laughs> it's easy. <laughs>
Okay. I, um, uh, wait, I, can I bring up one thing? Um, sure. the, Everybody else town, <laughs> the town is looking at um, going to, uh, similar to Zoom, to it's called GoToMeeting. It's um, less expensive. And also, um, the, it has a, they transcribe the meeting. Yeah. So it's easier um, to hack. It, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but they're looking into it, and so they wanted us to give it a try at one of our meetings to see. I've how been on go to meeting; it's about the same. I'll talk to my wife. I think she uses it. Yeah. All right. Well, the the board of selectmen is going to try it out, and they wanted the planning board to try it out. So well, you know, everybody's like everybody's uh, familiar with Zoom, and I know GoToMeeting.com has been around for a long time. But um, yeah. but a lot of the people that were using it when they tried Zoom stuck with Zoom. So there's, there's something. See, to be said I think there. it's easy to use. Yeah, there's something to be said about that. So tell them, pay the money, keep Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> you tell them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. You got you got more push than I do. <laughs> uh, well, I'm just you know I mean because because to be to make it any more difficult than it already is means that we're going to end up. Um, disenfranchising people, you know, people who are capable of Zoom but might might run into issues trying to uh, upload and, and work with uh, go to meetings. So, so I all mean, right, I Danielle, you'll be able to tell Matt. <laughs> so I guess I mean the I guess the the question was then did we want to did we want to try do a test you know not during one of our regular meetings but just like a test run to see how we like it. I mean, was that the question, Debbie? Like. Um, they ask us to that, do that. Yeah, yes, <laughs> but not if the answer is already no. I guess. Yeah, yeah, you know. I guess. Yeah. It, 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 I think it's more difficult to use, and people are already used to using the Zoom for these meetings. Changing it midstream just before you got to have public hearings is not well, an intelligent not move. I, it's I, not well, an intelligent move. To be fair, they've been having public hearings for a while. <laughs> We're the only ones. Oh, well, no, no, I, that's fine, but you know. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. But still, I they've been having public hearing. hearings on Zoom, and people used to looking for the Zoom and and getting right on, and well, now they're gonna the have to do something too. different. Here's the other thing now. Well, I was told it's much... similar to Zoom. Uh, you know, I don't know if well, there's any thing, though, you know, there's, 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 we're, we're, we're sort of talking as if this is gonna be the rest of our life. So, uh, you know, picking something. So, I mean, I think we got enough people comfortable with Zoom. Let's hang on to it for another six months and see what happens as far as vaccines and all that goes, because we may end up back in our room at some point if we can get to the point where we get a handle on the whole thing. Okay. I can say that, I mean, the Board of Selectmen, they're going to try it. So it's not just up to us to say whether or not we want it. Yeah, well, let's let them try and see how they do and if they see what they say. Okay. If they come back with, nah, it's not worth it, then we don't have to do anything. That's right. So let's look at it from that perspective. Okay. Okay. Yep. Good. Okay. Anything else? <laughs> I said, there's anybody definitely, want, anybody there's want definitely to buy no two kittens? Not buy. No. Anybody want two kittens? <laughs> Are they back with you? I'm kidding. Huh? Are they back with you? No, we have two two new ones. <laughs> Danielle needs one. That's why I'm getting up because they're like, for some reason, they've decided that they want to get into everything while I'm on. on of course they do. Yeah. I was so, wondering who you were telling to get out of here. I was like, there are only two people left in that house. No, they're climbing yeah. into baskets on my counter. and They're like everywhere. It's like, why? Because <laughs> yeah. they can. So, anyway. <laughs> so go go to meeting. They don't have a free go to meeting, you know, like you could get on zoom and get an hour for free. You gotta, you gotta get a, a 14 day trial and then it's going to cost you money. To participate? So, yeah, right away. Really? Right away it costs money. It looks like it. No, no, they were going to give us a free trial. Yeah. Well, you, I can get a free trial for 14 days and then I you're going to pay I for it. But I mean, the general public, if you're invited to a go-to meeting and it's yeah. a public meeting, you can't, I mean, I don't think they're going to expect people to sign up. Are they? I don't know. I mean, obviously, if they are, then it, you have to yeah. go away. Let's um, stick with this for a while and let the selectmen see how they, what they find out. And we'll just, we'll talk about it after they evaluate it. Okay. 
they may take the decision out of our hands by saying, no, we don't like it. And that's it. So. Uh, oh. Okay. Uh -huh. I okay, will check on it too. If All right. Started, then uh, I'm going to, we'll, we'll adjourn the meeting here at 8 to 49. A little later than our last 831, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, I do want one, one question before we go. What's that? That minor modification, is that a site plan? No. no. Because not if it exactly. is, we didn't have, we didn't have quorum. No, it's not a special permit because it was way before site plan was ever a special permit. <coughs> okay. Site plan was approved in 1991. Yeah. To be honest, I don't even think yeah. it was approved by us. We have a site plan, but it was a ZBA yeah. actually at the time. Okay. All right. I just, just, just. I know what to do with these because it is a site plan, but it's a from from. Yeah. How Prior. Many years well, I mean, their original premise was just to help them out, but I think that we need to do a little more than that. So now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then uh, as, at 8.50 then, we will adjourn. Sorry. We will officially adjourn, okay? All right. Everyone have a happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. Okay. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, everybody. See you, Phil. Hey, um,